So we just talked about several circumstances where alcohols can serve as electrophiles as long as we convert them into um, a species where the, the hydroxyl group can leave, either as water or as some other substituent. Um, it also turns out, though, that alcohols can also serve as nucleophiles. So you might remember when we talked about uh, acid and base chemistry, and we talked about that an alcohol uh, can be a, uh, a base, by which we meant um, a Bronsted base, which is going to react with a proton. But by the same token, an alcohol can also be a Lewis base, meaning it's going to serve as a nucleophile. So if we have the right electrophile in place, we can have uh, nucleophilic reactions of alcohols. Now, sometimes it's enough to uh, simply use the, the alcohol itself as the nucleophile, and that's if we have an electrophile that is uh, potent enough. But other times we're going to deprotonate, I mean, not to the arrow, uh, we're going to deprotonate to form the alkoxide, and then that's going to allow us to react with um, a whole range of other electrophiles. Okay. So now some of these you've already learned about in the previous semester. So if we're going to uh, substitute alkyl halides, substitute um, with, uh, so for example, with, with alkyl halides, we can form ethers, right? So in the case of a primary alkyl halide, um, what we need to do is to utilize the alkoxide. So we're going to have something like the, the sodium alkoxide, um, in which case then we can do a direct SN2 reaction, and that will allow us to form the ether of those two components. Okay, so that's an SN2 mechanism. And you might remember if you have a tertiary um, alkyl halide that you can then do um, SN1 type of chemistry. Okay. Uh, where uh, just the alcohol itself um, can serve as the, the trapping agent. So you're going to ionize and then trap. So that's an SN1 type of mechanism. And that can allow you to form ethers in those cases. All right. So that's uh, all just review for you. Um, but we uh, want to talk about the alcohol component here um, in this section. Okay. So there's a couple of other things that alcohols can do uh, acting as nucleophiles. So we already just talked about one of them, and that is forming a sulfonate ester. So let me just repeat that. If we have a sulfonyl chloride um, of whatever group, um, we, can, we can react that with the alcohol. And now uh, this is a very good electrophile, so we usually um, don't need the alkoxide. Uh, we do need some sort of base, and so um, typically we're going to use um, pyridine or um, we might possibly use something like triethylamine. Either of those is usually, usually okay. And that's going to allow us to form our sulfonate ester. Okay, so that's an example of utilizing an alcohol um, in its native form, not as the full alkoxide to do substitution. Um, and then there's a related reaction, and I don't want to go through this in too much detail because we're going to talk about it more um, when we get to the section on carboxylic acid derivatives, um, but that's where we can acylate um, an alcohol. So if we use an acid chloride, acid chloride, um, again, this is a good enough electrophile that we don't need um, a, an alkoxide to react. Um, we can get away with just the alcohol, uh, but we are typically going to want Again, some, some base that can uh, mop up the proton, the HCl that we would generate in this process. Um, but if we act these two, we can get to this type of species. And so um, this is an, called an ester, or more technically a carboxylic ester. Um, and so we would call this process um, either a, an esterification. Esterification, okay, that would be acceptable. Or um, if we're viewing it just from the point of view of the alcohol, like let's say that our, our molecule is, um, was rather large and we were just um, reacting uh, with a hydroxyl, we, we might um, use the terminology acylation. So we're adding an, an acyl group onto that oxygen. So we call it an acylation. Either of, those two, either of these two terminologies is completely acceptable in this case. 
Um, so I'm not going to go through this in detail or, or talk about the mechanism. Um, it's not complicated, but I, I want to leave that uh, to the section um, where we're dealing with this type of functionality. Let me just follow up on this, though, and say that um, if we there's other ways that we can do esterifications. And so uh, one thing that we can do is um, react with a, a different electrophile. Um, but in the acid chloride is sort of the most reaction reactive of uh, these acylating agents. Um, and so if we want to react with some of the others, we need to uh, we need to actually use the more reactive alkoxide, right? So we can we can use one of our strong bases to convert the alcohol to the alkoxide, and then now we're in business to do um, to react with some of these other electrophiles. So one thing we could actually do is to react with uh, what is already an ester, right? So here I just show a methyl ester. It could be an ethyl ester, or it could be any number of things, but it's already an ester. And what we're going to do is a trans esterification, trans esterification, right? Trans esterification. Right? Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm I'm taking one ester and making a different one, and so in this case my product will be will be this new ester, and then uh, I'll I'll just simply have an alternative alkoxide. In this case, I will spit out my sodium methoxide. Okay, so this is replacing um, the, the methoxide in this case to give a new ester, right? So since this is a, a worse electrophile, I need the stronger fully deprotonated alkoxide to react with it. Again, the details of that we're going to discuss um, in a future unit. Okay, it's appropriate at this point um, for me to mention that, um, that uh, phenols are also very much uh, viable um, for nucleophilic chemistry, okay, so um, we, uh, as you understand now, phenols are not um, subject to uh, nucleophilic attack themselves, right? They are not electrophiles, except for in the special case where we use them for cross-coupling by conversion to the sulfonate ester. On, on their own, though, they, they really can't undergo nucleophilic attack, um, but they can do, they can themselves be nucleophiles, right? So we can deprotonate a phenol, for example, with sodium hydride, or we could use some other uh, strong base. And if we do that, we will generate this anion of the phenol, okay, and there's our counter ion, and this would be called a phenoxide, okay? So phenol goes to phenoxide. And now this is uh, completely viable uh, as a nucleophile. So for example, this would do SN2 chemistry. Um, if I threw in um, methyl iodide, okay, methyl iodide, that can do a displacement. And what I will form then is the ether of the phenol. Um, and you might remember that this is called anisole. Okay, so that's how I can make uh, phenyl ethers. And and so you know. Uh, for the most part, I would say etherification is probably the most um, important uh, of these types of reactions. Um, the other one that we did talk about, though, and uh, you know, is reasonably important as well, is if we want to, in this case, um, acylate that phenolic oxygen. So, uh, acid chloride in this case, uh, pyridine, okay, and the acid chloride, and we can, uh, as you already know, uh, acylate that phenolic oxygen as well. Okay, so a few nucleophilic reactions of alcohols. Um, if you have a good enough electrophile, you can get away with just using the alcohol itself, um, usually in the presence of a base that takes care of the acid that you're gonna generate. Or if you don't have a good enough electrophile, you want to throw in a strong base to form the alkoxide, and now that's going to be a very good nucleophile to, to react with your, your weaker electrophile.